Hey friend, this is gonna be a bit of a different video today, not super design related, but I recently got the Keychron K3 mechanical keyboard. And as a designer, I get a bit nerdy about my desk setup and all the sort of different gear that I use. And I thought it would be interesting to give you a little kind of review and share my thoughts and opinion on this new hot keyboard. Let's do it. This is obviously not a keyboard or gear related channel, but I thought given that I am a very heavy frequent Mac user and a designer who cares a lot about the gear and the things that I'm using, I thought I would share my thoughts on this because this is my first keyboard that I've purchased other than the generic standard Mac keyboard. I think Keychron have been doing a really great job at sort of marketing their keyboards, especially the K3, as a good sort of entry level keyboard for someone who's maybe been using the Mac keyboard for a long time and you're starting to want to foray into using other gear. So for me, the transition from going to a Mac keyboard, which I've been using for years, to the K3 has been pretty smooth. So here is the keyboard here and you can see sort of compared to my head, it's actually very small, nimble and portable. If you have one of the sort of short wireless Mac keyboards, this is almost identical in size and key placement. I believe it has 72 keys, there is no numpad and the function row is sort of shared with the, the media sort of controls, which I really like, reduces the need for an extra row. So let's get into the pros first. So some things that I really like about this keyboard are its size and portability. It is very small and nimble and light, and it is very, very thin. I could totally see myself sliding this into my backpack in the future and taking it whenever I go to something like a coffee shop or a co-working space. I got the RGB version and I really like all of the different color combinations and cool effects that I have. I gotta be honest, I've only really been using it in sort of solid color block mode because otherwise I find all the animations a little bit distracting. Nevertheless, it's a pretty cool sort of show off feature that just makes it feel a little bit extra cool. Okay, the biggest pro for me is definitely the design. As a designer, I really care about the aesthetic of my gear. That includes my keyboard and I do really like the aesthetic and the design of this keyboard. The red escape key is a super nice touch and there's also a subtle difference between the sort of letter and number keys which are a dark dark grey versus like the tab and the shift and some of the other kind of control keys that are a little bit of a lighter shade of grey. The keys are not too chonky or too clunky so they kind of fit really nice with the aesthetic of my desk and in general I just think it's a really really nice nice nimble design. As a Mac user I was really looking for a keyboard that is wireless. Surprisingly a lot of mechanical keyboards are not wireless so I really like that this can connect over Bluetooth but I can switch it to cable if I want to really easily and have it plugged in. There's also a nice switch at the back to switch from Mac to Windows which is kind of nice knowing that if in the future I decide to switch to Windows I'm not going to have a problem using my keyboard. Another nice little touch is that the keyboard lets you know when it is running low on battery. I believe the F F8 key sort of glows red when it's getting low and then when you plug it in and once it's fully charged it will actually glow green uh, to let you know that the keyboard is now charged and you can unplug it. All right let's look into some of the downsides of this keyboard. I was expecting there to be some different levels of kickstands at the back of this keyboard so I could sort of customize the height that I wanted the keyboard to sit at. Unfortunately, this keyboard doesn't have that. They do have these little sort of rubber foots on the bottom and it's just one sort of height. Although in saying that, I haven't found it to be too uncomfortable. It's actually, I think I've gotten really used to the height, the natural height that it sits at, but it would have been nice to kind of have that little customization. Some of the keys are placed slightly different than the Mac keyboard. So I felt like I really had to relearn the delete key, the enter key and the shift key on the right hand side. I find I'm often sort of overstretching and like, accidentally hitting the wrong key. So it's just taking a little bit for me to relearn. Not a huge deal, but just keep that in mind that when you get this keyboard, you might have to sort of relearn how to type fluently on it as you're used to. After using it for a couple of weeks, I've started to notice that the spacebar is getting a little bit squeaky here and there. Sometimes when I press it, there's like an ever so slight squeak. I don't know if maybe I just have to sort of put some WD-40 or something in there to kind of loosen it up, or maybe this is just expected. I'm not entirely sure, but it's a little bit odd. 
And lastly, I do have a few issues with the Bluetooth. It does take quite a long time to wake up my computer. Usually the first thing I do when I sit at my desk is like press the enter key or sort of press any key on my keyboard to wake up my computer. And I have noticed that with this keyboard, it does take a little bit longer than my Mac one did. On average, I'd say I'm waiting probably about 20 seconds for my sort of computer to wake up if I'm coming first thing in the morning from overnight. If I'm sort of going away and coming back to my computer in like shorter increments, then I find it wakes up pretty quickly when I've been using it recently. But if I'm sort of waking up my computer after having it asleep for a really long time, Sometimes it can take a little while to the point where sometimes I actually just plug it in instead because it's quicker to wake my computer up that way and I get too impatient to wait for it. So while the Bluetooth seems to actually be connected, it's not like it's disconnecting. I haven't had that issue where it's disconnecting from the Bluetooth sort of mid using it. I do find that when the keyboard goes to sleep, waking it back up and then getting it to sort of wake up my computer again does take a little bit longer than I would like. I got the red switches for this keyboard. I was actually expecting them to be a little bit more tactile and a little bit sort of almost louder and have more of that clacky feeling. So I'm actually a little bit disappointed in the red switches, but to be fair, I this is my first time sort of going into switches. I didn't really know what to expect and what the different colored switches felt like. Red felt like a safe bet and a safe choice, but I'm actually a little bit disappointed in them and I want a little bit more of a, of a clacky tactile feel. So I think I'm actually gonna order the brown switches and then hot swap them out and see how that goes. All right, friend, and that is the Keychron K3 keyboard. It's been about two weeks that I've been using it and so far, no real issues. I'm actually really enjoying it and I don't see myself ever going back uh, to the standard Mac keyboard. So once I get the brown switches, I'm super excited to see the difference and how it feels. I'll let you know over on Instagram how that goes. In the meantime, before my next video, if you are interested in a mentoring session with me, I actually offer one-on-one -on -one time to chat through any questions you have about design or your career, feel free to pop on over to Superbear and book a session with me there. Catch you next time. Bye.